In the complex universe of human interaction, there are topics that remain hidden in plain sight, confined to whispers and covered by a veil of social taboo. Today, we are going to pull back that veil to examine one of the most persistent. We are venturing into an intimate act that exists in a strange limbo. It's an intensely personal decision, yet it's rarely discussed with honesty and scientific clarity. The question is simple, but the answers are incredibly complex. To swallow or not to swallow seminal fluid. For many, the answer is based on preference, intimacy, or culture. But what if I told you there's much more at play? What if we set aside judgments and analyze it not as a dilemma, but as a profound biological and psychological event? That is exactly what we are going to do. This is not a video of opinions. It is a deep dive into the often surprising science of what happens when this complex biological fluid interacts with the body in a way evolution did not primarily design. Scientific research, while still emerging, has begun to reveal fascinating information with both positives and negatives that has remained outside of public conversation. But once you understand what it truly contains, you realize the story is just beginning. So, what is semen really made of? The first thing is to tear down a widespread myth. It is not primarily composed of sperm. In fact, Sperm cells themselves make up only about 5 to 10% of the total volume. The remaining 90 to 95% is a sophisticated cocktail called seminal plasma. And this plasma is not a simple carrier. It is a highly engineered biological solution designed with a clear purpose to protect, nourish, and energize sperm on their arduous journey. Let's break down its components. First, fructose, a simple sugar that acts as high-octane fuel to give them the energy needed to swim. It also contains a rich mix of proteins and enzymes that protect them from the acidic environment of the female reproductive tract. And of course, minerals and vitamins like zinc, crucial for DNA stability, and vitamins C and B12. But this is where the story becomes truly intriguing. Beyond these nutrients, semen contains a potent array of mood-altering hormones and neurochemicals, compounds that are identical to the ones that regulate our own emotions and well-being. We find cortisol, known as the stress hormone, which helps regulate inflammation and the immune system. There's also melatonin, the hormone our brain releases to regulate sleep cycles. And, of course, serotonin, often called the happiness chemical for its profound impact on mood. Perhaps most notably, it contains oxytocin, the famous love hormone, which fosters feelings of trust, intimacy, and social connection. From an evolutionary standpoint, this is all a life support system for reproduction. But here's the question that changes everything. What happens when this cocktail, designed for one purpose, is introduced to a completely different part of the body, like the digestive system? Suddenly, these components are no longer just supporting sperm. They can be absorbed into the bloodstream. And that is where the unexpected effects begin, both the surprising benefits and the hidden risks. One of the most striking areas of research is its potential antidepressant effect. This idea gained notoriety following a 2002 study at the State University of New York at Albany. Researchers surveyed nearly 300 sexually active college women. Using the Beck Depression Inventory, a standard clinical tool, they found a surprising correlation. The women who were directly exposed to their partner's semen reported significantly fewer depressive symptoms compared to those who consistently or occasionally used condoms. The leading hypothesis, as researchers like Alex Chin point out, points directly to that psychoactive cocktail we discussed. The theory is that compounds like serotonin and oxytocin are absorbed and can exert a systemic influence that contributes to a greater sense of well-being. This suggests the post-intimacy emotional lift might have a tangible biochemical component. Beyond mood, the presence of melatonin could, theoretically, contribute to a feeling of calmness and aid in sleep. And oxytocin, the bonding hormone, can be seen as a biochemical reinforcement. It adds a biological layer to the psychological experience of closeness, potentially strengthening the emotional bond between partners. However, one of the most profound findings relates to the immune system and pregnancy. It centers on a concept called immunological tolerance. 
A woman's immune system is designed to attack foreign invaders, and biologically, a fetus is 50% foreign. An adverse immune reaction can lead to serious complications like preeclampsia. Remarkably, several studies have suggested that regular, long-term exposure to a partner's semen, even orally, can help build that tolerance. By introducing the partner's proteins and DNA over time, the woman's immune system learns to recognize them as safe. Research has shown a strong correlation. Women with more prolonged sexual exposure to the father's semen before conception have a significantly reduced risk of developing preeclampsia. It's as if the body receives a kind of natural immunization. But it is absolutely crucial to put these findings into perspective. They are not medical prescriptions. They are fascinating correlations and theories that invite us to think differently. This connection, this incredible exchange of chemistry that can strengthen bonds, is a two-way street. And for it to flourish, the trust and vitality of both partners are key. Now, we must flip the coin and look at the other side. A side that demands absolute seriousness and responsibility. Because just as there are potential benefits, the hidden risks are very real and can have severe consequences. To ignore them would be incredibly dangerous. The most immediate and undeniable danger is the transmission of sexually transmitted infections, or STIs. This is the most critical risk factor. It is a dangerous myth that oral sex is safe sex. Seminal fluid is a primary vehicle for a wide range of pathogens, and the mucous membranes of the mouth and throat are very effective at absorbing them. Let's be explicit. HIV can be transmitted orally if there are tiny cuts or inflammation in the mouth. Herpes, both oral and genital, is easily transmitted. The human papillomavirus, or HPV, is a major concern. Certain strains are linked to a significant increase in the risk of developing cancers of the throat, tongue, and tonsils. Bacterial infections like chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis can also infect the throat. And a sobering fact, many of these infections can be asymptomatic in the carrier. A person can be contagious without showing any visible signs. Beyond SDIs, there is another less common but serious risk, an allergic reaction. Clinically, this is known as seminal plasma hypersensitivity. While rare, some individuals can have a severe allergic response to specific proteins in semen. Symptoms can range from local itching and swelling to systemic anaphylaxis, a life-threatening condition that requires immediate medical attention. Finally, we must consider the partner's lifestyle. Experts like Alex Chin warn that the composition of semen is a direct reflection of a person's overall health. Toxins from excessive alcohol consumption, drug use, or even high doses of certain medications can be present in seminal fluid, turning it into a vector for these substances. The only way to mitigate these profound risks is through a foundation of absolute trust, honest communication about sexual health history, and regular STI screenings for both partners. Without that foundation, the potential for pleasure can become an irreversible problem. So, where does all of this leave us? After journeying through the chemistry, the potential benefits, and the critical risks, we arrive at a clear conclusion. This act is far more significant than social taboos would have us believe. It's not just a matter of taste. It is a genuine biological exchange, a complex transaction of chemical and genetic information that can have measurable effects on our emotional state and our immune system. We've seen how its psychoactive components could have antidepressant effects and strengthen emotional bonds. We've explored the incredible hypothesis that it might prepare a woman's immune system for a healthier pregnancy. But we have also faced the undeniable dangers, SDIs, allergic reactions, and the impact of a partner's lifestyle. These are not minor details. They are the critical counterweights in a very delicate balance. The purpose of this exploration is not to tell you what to do. The goal is to replace myths and misinformation with knowledge. Because true empowerment comes from understanding. From having all the facts to make a conscious, informed, and personal choice that is right for you, your body, and your relationship. In the end, knowledge is the bridge that allows us to move beyond taboos. By daring to look at the science behind our most intimate behaviors, we open the door to more honest and healthier conversations.
This is a choice that should only be made in the context of absolute trust, open communication, and a shared commitment to health. The science is complex, but the path forward is clear. Be informed, be safe, and be honest. Thank you for joining me on this deep dive into a topic that deserves more light and less shadow. If you found this information valuable, please like the video and share your thoughts respectfully in the comments. And if you haven't already, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next journey into the fascinating science behind our lives. Thank you for watching.